origin and growth of vedic religion vedic religion also called vedism the religion of the ancient indo-european speaking peoples who entered india about 1500 bce from the region of present day iran it takes its name from the collections of sacred texts known as the vedas Vedism is the oldest stratum of religious activity in India for which there exist written materials. It was one of the major traditions that shaped Hinduism. Knowledge of Vedic religion is derived from surviving texts and also from certain rites that continue to be observed within the framework of modern Hinduism. The earliest Vedic religious beliefs included some held in common with other Indo-European speaking peoples, particularly with the early Iranians. Though it is impossible to say when Vedism eventually gave way to classical Hinduism, a decrease in literary activity among the Vedic schools from the 5th century BCE onward can be observed, and about that time a more Hindu character began to appear. Vedic texts The only extant Vedic materials are the texts known as the Vedas which were composed and handed down orally over a period of about 10 centuries from about the 15th to the 5th century BC The Vedic corpus is composed in an archaic Sanskrit The most important texts are also the oldest ones They are the four collections Sanhitas that are called the Veda or Vedas The Rig Veda or Veda of verses the earliest of those is composed of about 1000 hymns addressed to various deities and mostly arranged to serve the needs of the priestly families who were the custodians of that sacred literature The Yajur Veda or Veda of sacrificial formulas contains prose formulas applicable to various rites along with verses intended for a similar purpose The Samaveda or veda of chants is made up of a selection of verses drawn almost wholly from the rigveda that are provided with musical notation and are intended as an aid to the performance of sacred songs finally the atharva veda is a later compilation that includes incantations and magic spells to each veda is attached a body of prose writings of later date called brahmanas C 800 to 600 BC which explain the ceremonial applications of the texts and the origin and importance of the sacrificial rites for which the Vedas were composed further appendices the aranyakas C 600 BC and the upanishads C 700 to 500 BC respectively expound the symbolism of the more difficult rites and speculate on the nature of the universe and humanity's relation to it when vedic religion gradually evolved into hinduism between the 6th and 2nd centuries bc the texts taken collectively became the most sacred literature of hinduism they are known as shruti what is heard the divinely revealed section of hindu literature in contrast to the later strata of religious literature known as smriti what is remembered traditional texts attributed to human authors but in modern hinduism theshruti with the exception of the upanishads and a few hymns of the rigveda is now little known while some of the smriti texts remain extremely influential mythology Vedism was a polytheistic sacrificial religion involving the worship of numerous male divinities and a few goddesses most of whom were connected with the sky and natural phenomena The priests who officiated at that worship were drawn from the Brahman social class The complex Vedic ceremonies for which the hymns of the Rigveda were composed centered on the ritual sacrifice of animals and the drinking of a for sacred mind altering liquor pressed from a plant called soma the basic vedic rite was performed by offering those to a sacred fire which was itself defied as agni and which carried the oblations to the gods of the vedic pantheon 
Agni and Soma were at the same time material elements of the ritual offering. Agni was the fire of the sun, of lightning, and of burning wood. Soma was the defied aspect of the liquid poured in the oblation. The god of highest rank, however, was Indra, a warlike god who conquered innumerable human and demon enemies and brought back the sun after it had been stolen, among other feats. Another great deity was Varuna, who was the upholder of the cosmic and moral laws. Laws Vedism had many other lesser deities, among whom were gods, goddesses, demigods, and demons. Ritual The ancient Vedic worshippers offered sacrifices to those gods in the hope that they in return would grant abundant numbers of cattle, good fortune, good health, long life, and male progeny, among other material benefits. To ensure the efficacy of their prayers, the people came to believe that their offerings could be made more acceptable to the gods if accompanied by songs of praise and other invocations of the gods' might and power. Thus originated the rites described in the Vedas. Every sacrifice was performed on behalf of an individual, the patron or yasmana, sacrificer, who bore the expenses. The rites of Vedic sacrifice were relatively simple in the early period when the Rigveda was composed. They required neither temples nor images. The ceremonies took place in an open space that was consecrated afresh for every important occasion. The altar, Vedi, was a quadrangle marked out by hollowing or slightly raising the ground. The Agnyadheya, installation of the fire, was a necessary preliminary to all the large public rituals and was preceded by the patron's fast. The sacrifices themselves were of two major types, domestic, grihya, and public, sarota, or vatanika. The domestic rites were observed by the householder himself or with the help of a single priest and were performed over the domestic hearth fire. Some occurred daily or monthly, and others accompanied a particular event, such as the samskaras, sacraments marking each stage of an upper caste Indian's life, from conception to death. The grand rites performed in public, by contrast, lasted several days or months and could usually be undertaken only by wealthy men or kings. They required the services of many priests and were usually performed at three fire altars. Most characteristic of the public ceremonies was the Soma sacrifice, which ensured the prosperity and well-being of both human beings and gods. In that basic ritual, a lay sacrificer was first consecrated, after which juice was pressed three times from the Soma plant, part being offered to the fire and part consumed by the priests. Each of the three occasion was preceded and followed by recitations and chants. Edibles such as meat, butter, milk, and barley cake could also be offered to a sacred fire. Animal sacrifice, the killing of a ram or goat existed either independently or as an integral part of the sacrifice of Soma. The celebrated Ashwamedha, horse sacrifice, was an elaborate variant of the Soma sacrifice. Human sacrifice, Purushmedha, is described and alluded to as a former practice but probably was merely symbolic. 